Thanks for the explanation, Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Mosqueda? Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, um, thank you to Councilmember O'Brien and to his staff for your ongoing work on this legislation and for your work um, with us in my office to really identify if there was a way for us to use the language in the text of the resolution to call out um, the priority populations that we do really want to address intentionally. Uh, we want to make sure that this is a bike network that's available and accessible for all ages and abilities, as said in the late legislation. But given the conversation that we had, and I thank very much um, Phyllis Porter, who came forward and talked about making sure that individuals have access to social, cultural, economic opportunities and destinations. This is also an opportunity for us to be really intentional in our language here to make sure that this new bike network is available for all languages, ethnicities, genders, race, as well as abilities and, um, and ages. And so the language that you see in front of you reflects those demographics and that commitment throughout the um, text. I, I use a shorthand for all of those um, categories to say alegra, which also means happy. When I take my bike into work and actually cut my commute in half um, by coming in on the bikeway, um, I show up happy, happy to have been outside for a brief moment, to be able to have a little bit of physical activity. And I know that more individuals will be able to show up happier at their places of work if they're safer also on their commute in. This is about economic justice, just as, as, as much it is, is about um, environmental justice. We're also creating the ability for individuals to have self-determination, to be able to decide when they're able to get on their bike and get to work in a safe manner, instead of maybe being reliant either on a car that's expensive or a bus route. Um, that maybe doesn't meet their time. And yes, we're going to increase the bus routes as well. Um, we want to make our streets safe, safe for pedestrians, safe for bicyclists, and safe for all that are on it, including those in buses and bikes, um, buses and cars. Um, so the language that you see in front of you also comes from a really a commitment to recognizing that as we think about um, the ability to get more folks out of their cars, which are the most, um, the, the item that contributes the most to pollution in Seattle is, um, is single occupancy vehicles. When we think about this through an economic justice lens, we must think about it through a racial and gender justice lens as well, because it's our communities of color who are going to be disproportionately impacted by climate change. And so, yes, we want more folks to get out of their cars, but we also want to make sure that we're investing in communities equitably across our city. City. We've talked about this before, Mr. President, where we currently have a situation where our zip codes are determining our, our health outcomes and how long we live. And many of you know that I spent the first few years of my career working in South Park at CMAR Community Health Centers, making sure that people had access to health care and, and health services. And now I live in Queen Anne, and you know that there's a, quite a distinction between um, the health outcomes for individuals who live in South Park versus Queen Anne. We need to rectify that wrong. We need to make sure that every community throughout Seattle has access to equitable services, and that means affordable housing. That means access to childcare facilities. That means access to food and grocery stores so people aren't living in food deserts. And, Mr. President, this means access to safe routes for people to be able to bike and walk and get around their communities safely. I'm really excited um, that this piece of legislation is moving forward after years of your work and advocacy. Thank you uh, to the sponsor for his work on this. And it's not just about making sure that people have access to a bike lane, because those bike lanes are not just about luxury. It is about access to bike lanes as a necessity, a necessity to be able to get to your job, to your childcare, to grocery stores, to make sure that people can get um, to hospitals, whether they're working there or they're visiting a loved one. And this really comes, um, my, my excitement about this is really renewed after coming back from Minneapolis, where I had the chance to meet with the individuals and the t-shirt that I'm wearing, which is Tamales y Bicicletas. Um, this organization promotes access to uh, safe routes in communities of color and connecting communities of color to downtown cores so that people can have access to jobs and opportunity in every corner of their city. They said that the most important thing in creating new bike lanes is to operate from a place of reducing harm, which means protecting lives and increasing access to bike lanes, as much as it is about reversing harm, recognizing that many of our communities have historically been disinvested in, um, thought of um, after the fact, and not included. I really appreciate the uh, report that the chair included with this um, resolution. And if I might just read from it, Mr. President, it has a few statistics that I think are important for women and people of color as we think about creating a connected bike lane. 
It says that women are consistently underrepresented as a share of the total bicyclists, but the share of women riding increases in correlation to better riding facilities, and that safety in numbers has additional significance specifically for female bicyclists. I feel that myself, Mr. President. It also talks about communities of color and notes that black and Latinx bicyclists make up a rapidly growing segment of the riding population. And yet it is black and Latino cyclists who feel uncomfortable, whether it be from assault from a vehicle um, or whether, uh, sorry, for accident from a vehicle assault or um, being um, cited by law enforcement. Um, these are barriers to uh, cyclists and we wanna make sure that people all feel safe and in biking in every community. And it also says something that I think is really important given the conversation we heard today from those who testified, that long-standing disinvestment in street infrastructure means that these riders are disproportionately likely to be killed by a car, more disproportionately likely than their white counterparts. So for me, this is really about what the back of this shirt says, and I know you probably all can't read it, but it says decolonizing one bike lane at a time. As we think about investing in the bike lanes and the infrastructure and the road networks throughout our communities, it's about connecting communities, not just creating bike lanes through communities or through communities of color. It's about making sure that individuals have access to local mercados, making sure that people can um, have individuals enjoy their small businesses and not just bike through it. The folks at Tamales y Bicicletas show, talked about how their studies, study after study, shows that when there is not a parked car in front of a business, actual visits and purchases at those local businesses increase. So we can think about how we promote economic justice, especially for low-income communities and communities of color and entrepreneurs who are trying to create um, economic uh, opportunities in their own communities when we think about connecting communities, not just connecting corridors through communities. So I'm really excited about this opportunity uh, to work with you to make sure that we are intentional about creating an integrated and connected bike network that lifts up all of our communities and high highlights the fact that we want this to be for all ages, languages, ethnicities, genders, race, and ability, so we can all have more alegre in our lives. Thank you. Thank you okay.